What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 30 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that a cylindrical barrel has a height of 8 feet and a diameter of 6 feet, and we're supposed to find the approximate volume of that barrel. Now the big skill that this question tests us on is the volume of a cylinder. There was another question exactly like this. It even has the same kind of trick answer. So I'm going to do this question the exact same way I did that one and start with the actual formula for volume of a cylinder, which is pi r squared times height. Now, if you recognize pi r squared, that's the area of a circle, which means that if I draw a circle here, I know that my area is just going to be pi times this radius, which is what r stands for, squared. But then if we bring a cylinder into it, a cylinder is like two cylinder or two circles with some lines in the middle. And these lines represent the height. So I need my radius and my height. Now the problem, unfortunately, doesn't give me right my radius. It gives me my diameter. And I'm actually going to have to go ahead and do a quick bit of math beforehand. And I'm going to have to remember that this is my diameter. The diameter is all the way across, and the radius is some of the way across. And I'm sorry, radius is half of the way across. So the radius equals the diameter divided by 2. Now, if the diameter is 6, the radius is half of 6, which is 3. So now that I know that my radius is 3, it tells me my height is 8. So that's all the information I need to go ahead and use this formula and solve this problem. So my volume is going to be pi times r squared, which is 3 squared, times my height, which is 8. And this is now in a form that I can just type in the calculator and solve. So that's pi times radius squared times height, pi times 3 squared times 8. It gives me about 226, which does match one of my answer choices. It matches choice B. So I'll circle that, but I do want to talk about the trick answer. Because the problem gave us the diameter, what if I just forgot to divide my diameter by 2? And instead of pi times 3 squared times 8, I did the wrong thing and did pi times 6 squared times 8, forgetting to turn or to go from my diameter to my radius. What then? Well, I could actually figure that out on my calculator again. Pi times 6 squared times 8, and it gives me something very close to answer D, 905. Now they throw this answer in there to try to trick you because they figure some kids are just going to rush into a problem like this and go, okay, I plug in 6, I plug in 8, pi times 6 squared times 8 gets me 905, fantastic, I'm done, I can move on to the next one and be done with this. These tests are torture chambers and they're going to try to get you to break. This is one way they try to get you to break. They put a question like this with one little piece of information that would trip you up near the end because after 30 questions you're going to be pretty tired of all this, but know the game. Know what they're going to try to do and don't fall for it, and this is one way you can avoid falling for it. Just read the question carefully, compare the information the question gives you with the formula that you have to use.